Welcome back to Between Two Fars. We're here once again with Ed Fine, who has been our patent attorney and intellectual property counsel since 1986. Um, prior to that, he's worked here at NASA Johnson Space Center for 52 years um, as a patent attorney. And, um, oh, I believe I've been like mispronouncing your title the whole time because you've been a patent attorney for 52 years, but you became patent counsel in 1986, correct? Patent counsel, yeah. Correct. Yeah, we, we don't have a huge budget here, so we're just going off of the sticky notes that are posted below the camera. Um, we wanted to get back with Ed today because um, there have been a lot of questions about SBIR contracts and the difference in IP rights um, when you start dealing with the SBIR program. So we thought we'd have Ed back today to talk to us a little bit about those distinctions. Uh, just to get started, could you sort of explain what an SBIR contract well, it, is? Well, it's a, there's a statutory authority, uh, and it's to, it, uh, the whole purpose is to give a kickstart to small businesses that want to get into the game, right? Uh, and you probably know more about the whole concept than I do. I, I know about the IP yeah. aspects. All right, of so it. let's jump into the IP well, aspects. How do they differ? Okay, the, the patent clauses are exactly the same as any other cl uh, patent clause, same patent clause for small businesses, small entities. Uh, SBIR contractors have the right to elect to retain title. We, at minimum, get a royalty free license to practice the technology. The, uh, the main distinction between uh, SBIR contracts and other contracts is in the data rights clause. There's a special SBIR data clause and the main distinction is that for data that qualifies as SBIR data, uh, they have the right to have the government retain those rights, retain that data mm -hmm. for periods up to five years. Oh. So we, can, we, we can't release it into the public. Uh, it's the only uh, category of contract where we can't release a contract report. Can we use that we um, can use information it. for other contractors if we have a non-disclosure yes, agreement? Yes. Okay, so internally we can still yeah, internally we can it. use it within the community, but we can't publish it or anything. That's right. the only real distinction, and, and it's again the whole purpose is to give these companies a leg up. That's what I was going to ask, you know, what benefit do they have? Does that mean they can market it for that five years? Yeah. And maybe do additional they development? Do their, they can do their own stuff and, and develop commercial products. And, and they can, like I said, retain rights to inventions they make. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully they will. Uh, I think we end up seeing a lot of SBIR contractors stay in that world mm -hmm. and, uh, and not really develop the, the the theory and the concept for which the statute was written but uh, so it's not always the launch pad that we hoped it no, would be no I, th I think they, they end up being SBAR contractors for their career but so be it yeah. the theory is that that they'll kick start a, a new a, idea a, or even a, a new industry a new industry yeah, yeah. all right well, we are so glad that we've had a chance to talk to Ed and learn a little bit more about SBIR contract IP rights. Thank you for joining us today and come back again for our next episode of Between Two Bars.